Many of the images of Islam in North America are ones of fear. So I walked in. Ashfeen the, Javid is here to shatter that picture and the division it's created. He's been invited to give a talk on understanding the Muslim mind to a non-Muslim audience. Muslims, so we think of them some crazy people that strap bomb and they blow themselves up and that's what Muslims think. Uh, they think about Muslims and so with that, uh, I, my goal is to help people understand how Muslims are anything but that. Javid is not an apologist for Islam. He's the pastor of Vancouver Christian Fellowship. But his life and incredible journey started as a devout Muslim in Iran. My grandfather was a Muslim leader. My father was part of the movement of revolution of the Islamic Republic in Iran. I was the one that was most devout. As he grew up, so did his dedication. And as a young teen, he joined Hezbollah. I didn't think just praying and fasting is enough. So I joined the Basij, which you know here in North America as, as Hezbollah. And I served in that army for three years. After a two-year stint in Pakistan, Javid was arrested in Malaysia for carrying illegal passports. He was thrown into prison. There, he had a strange encounter. And I would just uh, meditate in the verses of, of Quran. And once, as I was doing that, I felt just a fear, just feeling my heart, and I felt literally a presence of a spirit. Uh, this, this spirit immediately made me feel like my life is in danger. I knew in my heart uh, what we call shayateen, uh, satanic, demonic spirits. So I started rebuking it in the name of Allah, and I just cried out in Farsi, my own native language, said, God, help me. And the moment I said that, as clear as you hear my voice, I heard a voice. And that voice said, bring the name of Jesus. And the words that came out of my mouth sounded without thinking, Jesus, if you are true, show me yourself. And before I was finished with the sentence, that spirit had ran away. And that, uh, that is how my story basically began. That is not my story of conversion, but that's the beginning of my confusion. Confusion because though Jesus is considered a holy prophet in Islam, he's not someone Muslims pray to or call upon. In the weeks that followed, that confusion grew. Why would Jesus help you? How come Jesus' name did this and so on and so forth? And so I asked and prayed and fasted that he would show me and what way would he like me to follow him. And so after two weeks, I had no answer. And when I didn't have an answer, uh, and I didn't get any signs, it made me really upset. We must understand in our mind, we are different. We are, we are very passionate people. We pour our hearts out for someone we, 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 we would give our life for someone we love. And uh, because I had given everything and I had not heard an answer, I, it made me very angry and in rage I uh, yelled at God and said, you don't exist. As a Muslim, denouncing Allah was an unforgivable sin. But then he had another strange encounter in his cell. And then I felt the whole room filled with the holy presence of God. It is as if time stops. You know things about God without him ever saying anything to you. And the first thing I knew about him was his holiness. I knew he's a holy God. And um, I knew that he's just. And I knew immediately that uh, simultaneously these things are going through my mind and my heart. And I knew I'm on hold. This is in spite of all the good things I've done in my life. I knew that I have sins in my life and I knew that uh, he's just and he must judge me and because of his justice, I deserve death. But that didn't happen. Instead, he felt a tap on his shoulder. Right at that moment, I felt a touch on my left shoulder and a voice that says, I forgive you. And uh, I didn't understand. 
I did not understand uh, what, how could that be possible because because I had heard Allah is forgiving and merciful, but we cannot know his forgiveness till the day of judgment. So I said, who are you that forgives me? And I feel forgiven today. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I did not understand what that means because I had never heard those words. So I said, what is your name? And he said, Jesus Christ, the living God. I fell on the floor. And I just wept. He told his fellow prisoners what happened. Some shunned him. Others followed him to faith. But Javi knew he needed more than his story. So he prayed for a Bible. His answer came through a fellow prisoner. Then he reached out from his back and said, this is for you, this is what you have asked for. And I looked at it, it's a book, there's nothing written on the cover, but I knew it's a Bible. He grabbed it out of his hand, forgot to thank him, ran to the room, thank God, kissed it as we do. And when I opened it, it was in a language I couldn't read. So I thought, thank you for the Bible, but you have sent me the wrong language. And he said, no, read this. I said, but I can't. He said, read. And I said, but I can't. I don't know this language. He said, read. And I said, and as I looked upon the page, the words came alive. I could read and I could understand. It was written in English, a language he didn't know then, but one he preaches in today. His message is for everyone, though his heart is for Muslims. He's never shied away from sharing his story, though it's nearly cost him his life. I went to a mosque in Bangladesh, and I shared the gospel in that mosque. And they decided to take me outside the mosque and kill me. But because the night before I had prayed for a lady and her son, and her son was dying, and he got healed in the name of Jesus, she came to the mosque and told everybody how her son had been healed. So the imams brought all the sick people to outside the mosque, set us down and said, pray for these people, should they get healed? And should, you, should they get answered, you live, otherwise you die. And so we prayed and God answered. And they kept us there for another six days, forced us to go to their homes to preach the gospel to them, their children, and their children's children. Many times I wonder... Today his ministry is more than just sharing his story. It's encouraging others to tell theirs. He says that's the only way to bring hope and understanding in a world of fearful images. We need to share our testimonies. If a Muslim person is in your life, it's not because they need to hear my testimony. They need to hear your story, how you were touched by the love and the passion of Jesus Christ for you. And in the end, live a life so impacted by God so full of his Holy Spirit, so full of his presence, that they would say, I want the same relationship with God that you have. Javid's also written a book called As Easy as Drinking Water. It's a Persian saying, he says, pertains to the forgiveness he felt from Jesus that day in his jail cell. He says there are so many others out there thirsty for that kind of forgiveness and, and, uh, and hope. The sons of Ishmael are crying out because they are thirsty. They are thirsty for life, and Jesus is the living water. And you and I are the bearers. Out of us shall pour out the living water. But if we are afraid of them, we will not go close enough. Should I be the rock in their desert, and should Jesus flow out of me, their thirst will be satisfied. In Toronto, Denise Lottie, 100 Huntley Street.